On today's show, we take a look at the technology preview by Assetto Corsa. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Sean Cole with my good buddy, Darren Ganji. And we're here today to take a look at the much hyped and very long awaited Assetto Corsa Technology Preview by Kunos Simulazoni. Did close I get enough. It? I, probably the closest Let's I've just ever shorten got it. it. Kunos Simulation. There you go. Or Kunos. If you're not familiar with Kunos, they are the makers of First Net Car Pro, Stefano. Casillas? I'm Casilla? Casilla? Sorry, Stefano. Um, and so Netcar Pro, and also the virtual Ferrari Academy. Yeah. Kind of like a preview. It was, it was just two tracks or three tracks. Well, and they kept releasing a new one for each new challenge that came along in the Ferrari challenge there. Yeah, and I believe somebody actually won a trip to go do something. Anyway, yeah. so they developed that. Uh, in conjunction with Ferrari, and now here's Assetto Corsa. And like Sean said, we've been waiting about a year to get our hands on this technology preview. It's not a demo, so I'm gonna make that uh, clear right now. Nor the final quality of, you know, a, what's Assetto Corsa gonna be. Right, right. So basically this is acting as a technology preview t so they can see how it runs on different systems. So if they need to make any final tweaks. Right, so they can get some feedback and maybe uh, address some issues that they'd find in the public now. And in their words, they're considering it a playable beta benchmark and it has been released in order to check out compatibility with a larger PC audience and to improve the code before the final release of the full game. Therefore, there may be some bugs, mm -hmm. stuff like that, but it's gonna send that information to Kunos. Matter of fact, right. it, it loaded some odd program. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm assuming that is sending data back. You know, it'll load the uh, DirectX stuff and uh, the, the, what's it called? The net, uh, what's the Windows thing? Frameware? Yes. It'll, it'll load that stuff and then it loaded this penguin thing or whatever it was called. So yeah, that's lo that loads as you're installing the game. Actually, right. when it first came up, I said cancel. Uh huh. But then it wouldn't let me play. Yeah, it was kind of required. That's the whole point of this. Yep. And they're asking for your or our help, everybody's help out there. And this is not to go out in forums and start bashing anything that went wrong, but play it, let that feedback go back to them so that they can start addressing any issues that are out there. That's the point, a little trial, shakedown of the system. Exactly. So what did we get in this technology preview? It's a playable, no limited benchmark that allows gamers to get their first taste of the Assetto Corsa engine. The version includes one track, one car, different difficulty levels, and two play modes, free practice and time attack. Mm -hmm. You can drive the Lotus Elise SC on the Italian track Magione, reproduced using their advanced laser scan technology. This version is compatible with a keyboard, an XPad 360, a variety of joysticks, steering wheels, and any kind of customizable game device. So XPad 360, I'm assuming that's the Xbox 360 gamepad. Yeah, when you plug it into the PC. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, the minimum system requirements are Windows Vista, Windows 7 or 8, DirectX 10.1 or 11, a DirectX 10.1 or 11 graphics card with one gigabyte video RAM, a dual core CPU, two gigabytes of memory, and note that Windows XP is not supported. The AC Tech Preview might be compatible with any DirectX 9 or 10 cards, but it doesn't support this kind of hardware. So this is sort of like the dawn of a new era where certain things are being phased out and... Hey, you know, that's technology and it, you know, it advancing, yeah. so I, I think that's cool. Yeah. So, Sean, why don't you tell people who's gonna be able to access... This is kind of cool, this is kind of Ferrari-esque because you actually need to be an owner of the previous product, Netcar Pro, in order to be eligible to get this tech demo. Yep, and if you don't, they have a deal right now going for 499 euro uh, up until March 1st where you can get Netcar Pro. Mm -hmm. And I've already seen some comments over on Virtual R, people complaining, what, I gotta buy this to test it? Well, 
then don't. Right. I mean, honestly, <laughs> Netcar Pro is worth checking out. I Absolutely. mean, if, honestly, if you're a sim racer and you don't have that as part of your library to at least check out probably one of the best tire models in sim racing, mm -hmm. you're missing out. So Absolutely. check it out, get a feel for it. There's some decent cars in there and actually there's some mods you can get. So mm -hmm. 499 euro when a lot of people it, over time have paid more than that. Yeah. Dude, pick it's up Netcar. It. Yeah, it's worth picking up and support these guys. They're a small development team, so. Mm -hmm. Don't complain about it. Just either get it or don't. Mm -hmm. So if you have it, you can use your Netcar Pro license code to activate the AC Tech, call it AC, Seto Corsa, the Tech Preview. So there's all the box cover stuff or the press release kind of information out there. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to tell you a little bit about it and how it felt, what it looked like, and our thoughts on it. The T500 RS wheel and pedal set from Thrustmaster, officially licensed by Sony and Gran Turismo 5 and designed for the most die-hard racing fans. It has unmatched power and precision, it's backlash free and totally responsive. With this wheel and pedal set, users will go farther than ever before in their racing experience. To find out where to purchase the T500 RS, visit www.thrustmaster.com. Welcome back to Inside Sim Racing. Sean Cole here with Darren Ganji, and back to our first look of the Assetto Corsa technology preview. <laughs> Got a little confused there. I was going to say demo, but it's not a demo. Uh, so first up, we're going to talk about the graphics. And my first impression was kind of like a Gran Turismo saturation, right? Look, right? Uh, incredible, incredible graphics. Uh, some of the effects that I really liked. The dust, right. you go off track, good frame rates, uh, triple screen compatibility. So the graphics are definitely nicely done and they've definitely stepped up compared to Netcar or even you know the Ferrari Virtual Academy. Absolutely. Next thing we would really focus on is the physics and they live up to their name. I mean, who knows you expect good physics and the physics are really good in this. You've got some great feel from the road. You've got great feel when you get off road as well. You've got the, the really cool tranny uh, that's been put into this. So if you miss shift, I mean, you're not even gonna get a gear. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, they've done some very, very good things. I mean, I don't know how full blown version this is, but it's what I expected and, and made me feel good. Seems pretty <laughs> close to what, what would be final. And I'm gonna touch a little bit more on the physics too, because that's the meat and potatoes. Yeah. And something about the Kunos physics that of all the sims out there, you feel the tire carcass, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the, the flex of the tire. You know what it's doing just about better than any sim out there. Yeah. I, I, I racing actually with their latest tire model has definitely pretty much matched that, I'd say. But yeah. man, they, from the get-go back in Netcar Pro right. had it, and it just, I don't think, it. I don't think I spun that car or didn't react the way I thought it would react right. because it seems so real. At the moment of traction loss, I think is when Assetto Corsa or Netcar always really took Excel. off. That's the moment that you really say, ah, this feels good. I agree with that. Next up, sounds and also nicely done. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite effects, you go off road mm -hmm. and you know you've picked up some gravel yeah. and you hear the gravel coming off and getting yeah. up, up and, you know, into the fender well and stuff. Love that sound. Yeah. That is so cool. The gr the tranny grinding noise. <laughs> yeah. So cool sounds. I thought the I thought the um, the the motor sound, considering it was only a lease, mm -hmm. you know, Lotus Elise had some good low end punch. As a matter of fact, yeah. no transducers running in my on my rig. Right. And the woofer vibration was shaking the room. Right. From the low end, you know, uh, low end RPM rumble and stuff. So yeah. Good yeah. sounds. Uh, that takes it to the force feedback, which kind of overlapped with, for, uh, well, we talked about it with physics, and it felt really good. So everything we were talking about physics, it was been being transmitted through that wheel, and it was good, strong force feedback. Absolutely. And actually, let's talk about that track, laser scan track, which directly relates to force feedback, too. Very nicely done. As a matter of fact, I started with the uh, driving line on, mm -hmm. and one of the things with the driving line that can really help you, especially when a sim isn't really giving you the sense of speed that you want or the depth, you need to turn that driving line on to really kind of find your braking points and you stuff. You can kind of see the corner better at first that way. I turned it off instantly. Uh -huh. pretty much. I ran one or two laps with it on and then I went and found how to turn it off and I didn't need it. Uh -huh. 
I was able to judge the depth really well. I was able to judge, you know, the, the sense of speed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the tracks are really nicely done. I like that they're laser scanning, and I'm really looking forward to seeing. I've never driven on that track before. Right. Simulated, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots of feel, both in the force feedback, like Sean said, and in the track surface. Yeah. yeah. Road noise, I guess you could call it. Yeah. So uh, controls. Mm -hmm. uh, we were on force feedback. You can map everything. I've, you know, I've got the T500, Club Sport pedals, two button boxes, and the shifter. It picked up all of them. Right. I didn't even have to uh, what's what, calibrate them. Right. They were all recognized, uh -huh. and I just basically had to set them you know, for 1080 degrees of rotation right. for the T500 and just map my, uh, tell right. them what I wanted to do, but very nicely done on the controls. And, and with anything, I mean, you heard the list of supported c controls earlier, so I mean, you're going to be able to map things even on the, the control pads. Yep. And that takes us to the UI or the user interface, and it's got a very classy look about it. Uh, one thing I'll say, and I don't know if this is final, but when you're racing in triples, which you mentioned are supported, it looks great. When you switch back out of game into the menus, it goes to a single monitor. Yeah. But it does have a very classy, clean look and, and, and an upgrade for the, the title, I would say. Yeah, cause, well, because Netcar was honestly a little... Dry? Yeah. and, and <laughs> Simplistic? It, not even simpl actually difficult. You're right. You know, it wasn't very user friendly. You had to start your car, you know, hit the ignition, start right. the car. So you had to do a lot of intricate things to get there. Um, but I think they've really polished it. And like you said, it's, it's a classy UI and, and nicely done. And, mm -hmm. and everything is easy to find. Like I said, I mapped the controls really easily. So right. nicely done. Damage is off. So yeah. we, we couldn't test that at all. So right. the setting, you couldn't even change it. Um, but. I don't know, what else can we talk about? I think that's, you know, there's, it was all, I gotta say, actually, let's just get into final thoughts. We're all not right. gonna raid anything here because obviously this is just the technology preview. It's not even a demo, so. It'd be unfair. It would be very unfair. Bottom line is, I want more. Yeah. I can't, you know, that one track and one car was <laughs> not enough for me, but hey, I, th I like that we're d what they're doing. You know, they wanna get that data mm -hmm. so that they can mm -hmm. make their game better. Yeah. So. I would like to see more, and I'm really looking forward to their full title. Now, you know, they're say Q, Q1 2013. Right. Q1's almost over. Yeah, we're one more month. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that would be by the end of March, and hey, if they can make that date, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. But if not, I'm, hey, when it comes to a, a sim title, I'd rather wait to get them close, you know, so that they get closer to perfection versus right. them putting something out and turning people off because yeah. it's not ready for prime time. Yeah, you can lose your audience that way. Absolutely. You, you know, one thing I'll say about this, I kind of thought is- Final this, thoughts. My final thoughts. I thought of this group, Kunos, these are kind of the dark horse of the sim racing market. And it's like a lot of expectations from those in the know who played Netcar, Ferrari Virtual Academy, and know how quality the physics are. And seeing them kind of getting up to speed with the other teams and having a better UI and a little bit more... DirectX uh, 11 yeah, graphics. Exactly. That puts them right up there at the top of the list. And, and now that I've driven it, it's not just screenshots or videos that they produced. It's something that I can start to feel, hear, see, and that makes me really excited. So they can't be that far off. I mean, we're driving it. Yeah, so. you know, it seems close. And you know, they, they talked about bugs. I didn't really, I think it crashed on me once, but it wasn't, wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, and, and everybody's expecting net car physics in this and you're gonna get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd say if, if anything even stepped up because they've added people to their team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, they're well on their way. Got some good licenses, BMW, Lotus, that's... Ferrari coming on board. They're gonna have 10 laser scan tracks. Yeah, and that's a huge difference. Modability. Yeah. You know, they've already started talking to the community and saying, hey, we're gonna have this ready for modding and yeah. they're gonna support that, so. Yeah, there. You know, I gotta say, I, I, I had we, we talked about the top five, the big five coming mm -hmm. this year, and I had honestly put them more towards the bottom. But after trying this, man, and no offense to Kunos, because you guys are in some tough company here. <laughs> iRacing, ISI, uh, Project Cars, slightly mad, and mm -hmm. Race Room. I mean, yeah. those are some big players who yeah. have been around and made you know made huge games. Where yeah. Netcar was more of a you know, I'd say it's almost underground in a weird way. That was the perp that was the word I was looking for. Kind of an underground sim that never really took off. Long development team, you know, mm -hmm. time too. They were right. years between development. So yeah. great to see them focusing on one title, getting the backing 
to really push this and yeah. compete with the big boys. Yeah, very You know who exciting. else I want to see? There should be a six, you know, and maybe this isn't the show for this, but there should be a six team. You know who it is? Live for Speed. You got it. I've been, the whole time we were doing this, I was like, yeah, they've kind of taken that spot away from them. Yes. Yeah. Who's Live for Speed now? Exactly. So that's going to wrap up our first look at the Assetto Corsa, or our only look at the Assetto Corsa <laughs> technology preview. Next look's going to be at the demo, or hopefully the full game. Yeah. So hopefully you've enjoyed our look, and uh, anything else before we go? No. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you guys next time. GT Chassis Racing Rigs provided by Human Racing. Go to humanracing.co.th.